can you imagine seeing Airbus Defence and Space as the apple from the LMR industry? <laughs> With these suitcases, when it works, it works. <laughs> but you know, if everything is fit in, you've forgotten something, you have to do everything all over again. Game, set, match. Checking out. It should be done in about two minutes. Or three minutes, Lisa. And this one is for you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let's head up for day three, critical communications at PMR Expo. There we go. I'm hoping to find some more information on how the end users are experiencing these changes within critical communications or even the distributors. Do they need extra help from consultancies or can they manage themselves? We will find out in the next few hours of the show. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. One of the major companies in the LMR space is Airbus Defence and of course Space. Now we talked to Marcus Colland for Airbus Defence and Space Secure Land Communications. Marcus, um, Tetra Pager. Now I know that the Tetra Pager was released, I believe, three years ago at this show. Yes. Correct? Three years later, does that mean three years later you have your first customer? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, we signed a contract with one of the German lenders to introduce Tetra Paging. Uh, as many of you know, there was a big debate about Tetra Paging, does it make sense? How would the device look like? Uh, and we, with this pilot customer, developed the device as it is. Uh, as you said, three years ago we launched it, we had the first prototype. Uh, two years ago we delivered the first product to the customer. Now, now yes. those of you who know the German market, customers take their time to really test the technology and adopt it. This has been done last year and we are just about to deliver, and we are roughly at seven to 8,000 pages now, delivered into operational use in Hessen, so that's where we stand today. And we were talking actually about box moving companies. Yeah. Um, from the past, uh, many of the companies, LMR manufacturers, were box moving companies, moving radios, moving boxes. I believe that is a box, right? That is a box, that's true. <laughs> so what about the box moving business? So, so, so it's a very good question and it's a very, I would say, tangible, tangible evolution is the small um, black box you see on the bottom here. Uh, that's going to be the hardware which you will deliver into a Tetra switching site. And those of you who know uh, how a Tetra switching site looks like for the public safety network in Germany, know that this is uh, probably not even tenths of the size of what we deliver as hardware there. And by the way, it's not hardware from us, it's hardware from a company called HP. It's, it's unbelievable, it's so small. So, so moving away from this industry where you have these large cabinets, large boxes and moving into black box down there. It's just a black box, it's not the rest, it's just a black box. Oh, there's one other thing that I want to know about the future of critical communications within Airbus Defense and Space. Now we have seen a lot of companies with new technologies, so the systems are there, the radios are there, the applications are there, supporting the end user, supporting the police officer. What is your view on that? So we are, we are obviously starting rather modestly on that and we know competitors do much more uh, innovative things. Uh, why do I say that? Because uh, we think in Europe uh, there is more an evolution of what application you put in the hand of a police guy. Uh, we see the virtual reality, we see the Google Glass, we don't believe that those type of technology will hit the market in the next five years. What we do is something else. Uh, this is by the way just a, just a gimmick but it represents more or less uh, the, the 
the size and the form factor of a new product we're going to have. It's a, it's a, it's a Tetra radio with an integrated smartphone. And with an integrated smartphone, which comes with an Android uh, operating system, so you can do everything with the smartphone you can do with your standard uh, Android uh, device. The good thing about this, it's a Tetra radio, so you don't have to uh, have concerns about certification of this in the network. It's working like a Tetra radio, but it comes with the broadband capabilities and the smartphone capabilities on top. So what we want to create, and we call this the Smart Twist program, we want to create a, a similar dynamics that we see in the commercial market of application developers and vendors very, very close to the customers, understanding their needs, which may be specific from country to country, from organization to organization. We invite them into an app developer program, very similar to what you see in the commercial world, the App Store from, I, from Apple, uh, the Google Play Store, similar mechanisms. Can you imagine? seeing Airbus Defense and Space as the apple from the LMR industry. Hauke Holm, he's CTO of Hytera, and Hauke has come a long way in the industry. Um, I can say more or less, you're, you're a veteran in the industry, are you? It's quite it's fair to how say. many years are you in this industry? Oh, it's 20 years now. 20 years is a long time. Yeah. Right. And especially if you see the changes, you know, I've seen changes from the past, but the changes nowadays are are moving up. Quite fast. Oh, oh, really? Really? How 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 does that affect your business strategy, and how does it affect the way you have to act in your sector? Oh yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, it's not easy to answer, to be honest. But uh, we have to be very fast nowadays. So we need to make the right decisions, and we need to check always and prove if our decisions have been right. And if they are wrong, so we need to adapt as well to the strategy on that. Uh, I've seen quite a bit of changes in the industry over the past 20 years. It seems that the switch to LTE to broadband in the industry is actually going quite a bit faster than expected. But there must be something in between, you know, from these Tetra networks, these narrowband networks to broadband networks. Exactly. The standard is not yet ready, Mission Critical Push to Talk, release 14 will come, not this year, not next year, later on. So that means what come what is in between? What is in between for High Terra? Oh yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. We need a migration technology. In public safety, this is a different story. It is mission critical communication and we just can't simply switch from narrowband, a very mature technology, to something new without knowing uh, how it is gonna work. So we need a proven technology before we can do it. And, so, okay, so what is that proven technology for Hytera? So what we did is we invented a new product, a hybrid terminal, a terminal which can speak LTE and Neuroland at the same time. With that technology, you can utilize broadband, but at the same time, you build the mission-critical voice and mature technology on Neuroland. Why you can experience all the mission-critical voice via LTE, but you can count still on the Neuroland. So, so, wait a minute. Does that mean you can use that device for Tetra, for voice, and for LTE, for voice? Exactly. But you can also use it for LTE, for data. Yes, exactly the idea. So if, so if there's no Tetra coverage, and there's LTE coverage for voice, you can use LTE for voice, but not according to the standard yet. Yes. Flyer for the new Hytera PD98 5 radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, how are you doing with that later on? <laughs> I'm filming. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yes, I can see that. Yeah, it's rolling. The camera is rolling. Now we should be serious, right? Okay, yeah. What do you want to know? Okay, the question is. The world is changing on devices. Yes. So I guess the world is changing on accessories. Yes. How much is that changing? Um, things are becoming a lot more 
uh, lightweight and a lot more personable to the user. Um, people are also looking a lot more at wireless. People historically have talked about Bluetooth but haven't really known what sort of Bluetooth accessories they want. But now that Bluetooth is becoming embedded in the actual devices themselves, uh, we're looking at having more Bluetooth accessories available and those are sort of some of the things that we're working on. So Bluetooth is widely accepted by the industry now? Becoming more so, I'd say, yes. Okay. Yes. Historically, there's been security concerns, and the user hasn't really fully understood exactly what he wants. He's been used to using Bluetooth in his mobile phones in his car. Yes. He wants to use it with radio, but he's not 100% sure what he wants. So he seems to be a lot more aware of exactly what his requirements are now. Right. So that, that means that there will be more new developments on that part? Yes, that there will off? be, yes, yes. There's things we're working on we haven't got here today, but so by this time next year we will do. But there is one person in this industry, I know for quite a long time, but he's in this industry for 38 Eight. years. Now, Paul Wilson is his name, and 38 years, it only takes three years to go on leave, is it? On years. final leave. Yeah, yeah, for final retirement. How is a final retirement? Yeah. So, so you have seen so many changes within this industry. What yeah. change did you like the most? Uh, when I got promoted and I got a big pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the biggest change I've seen is, uh, I always say when I started my career, I was sending Morse code and I worked it out that was two kilobits per minute. <laughs> and now we're talking gigabytes or megabytes per second. So that's the biggest change I've seen. And of course IT and everything like that. It's and amazing, I'm, I'm really it? pleased to see my grandchildren can now use my iPad to look at pictures and whatever, and they're only two years old. And not with two yeah. kilobits per minute. No, no, no they're, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's the biggest thing, you know, if you put it in perspective, in my lifetime or my career, it's gone yes. from that speed to these dazzling speeds. And people are complaining that their internet access is not 50 megabytes or whatever it is. And we come from two kilometers per minute. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest change.